Oh, so weird. Well, welcome to the Chaos Evolution meeting for October 5th, 2021. Uh, today we are talking about what we discussed last week or two weeks ago. We were in the middle of a metrics freeze, and so we did not have um, a very long meeting, and I was not at the meeting. So I believe I was working on an auger release, which still remains ever so close. We have made we're probably over 600 commits in this release, so it is substantially improved in a myriad of ways. Um, that said, on the emoji metric, I have not reached out to Remy on that, um, but I do talk to him every few weeks, and I think I'm, I believe I'm talking to him next week. So um, I will make sure that I talk to him. Oh, why aren't you? Okay. So I've now actually reached out to Remy. And so I took care of that action item. And then from last week, uh, new metric to work on change request commits. So I believe this is a this is going to be an edit, right? So change request commits already. Does this one already exist? Uh, you know what? I, I don't know, but I know how to find out. <laughs> I think there's a few that are similar, but I think this is not one we've finished. Let's see, common evolution. This would be certainly code development activity, maybe. Or are these links broken still? Apparently so. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm a... I have no clue why this this isn't working anymore. Uh, so it's a it's something weird with the way the markdown is converted into HTML. I think uh, either that or HTML has had HTML five has had some sort of update that has removed the possibility right. for a so change request commit. Links. All right. So. so change request commit is actually something that I've been doing a lot of deep diving into lately, and it is not a released metric. The most interesting thing is that the change request commits, unlike the regular commit log, is it, it will not, um, essentially there's a common practice of squashing commits. So the commits that are associated with a change request um, don't give you the level of detail that the commits that you process by navigating the commit log give you. Um, it's not good or bad. It's just a thing. So, okay. Uh, so there is, there is a difference between change request commits and code changes commits. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so but at least on the GitHub platform, I can, right. I can absolutely assure you of that after okay. spending some time investigating it. So I should note that code changes commits is a name change uh, that has not been released yet. So but in the, uh, the process, in the, right? uh, uh, no, no, I don't think this is in the review process. I think that we are holding that for the next review. And let me just take a peek at, uh, uh the metrics definitions so I, I think the metric exists however i think we were being explicit in the naming so we were adding yeah so right now we have so code changes exists all right and code so changes should... is being to be explicit code changes is being renamed code changes commits 
And so for, for the purposes of making your process easier, we shouldn't make an interim change right now. We should wait for the next release to actually come out and then put it under review. Yes. So yeah. otherwise and I think, we would do we, muddy the water. And it's possible we even have a pull request in for it that we just haven't, uh, yep, we haven't accepted it yet. And the reason we, if we look at that pull request, we're going to see, yep, there's a message that said, that says, uh, this change needs to wait for the next release cycle. So, and I can share that link with you if you'd like. Yep, no, I'm looking at it right now. So yeah, we'd, we'd come up with that change, but it was just as the review process had begun. And I just remember, um, I remember from the past, I think, is it November 1st that you're looking to have these published or is it sometime before that, Kevin? Uh, the, the new metrics? Yeah. So the English, ver so I'm, I'm actually in the community meeting. I was going to talk about that, but I think the, I think we give the working groups two weeks to uh, do their final reviews and uh, ready the metrics. Uh, so if that's the case, then the uh, plan on releasing the metrics on the 15th or 18th uh, and then give the translation team a week to uh, do the translations. So plan on releasing the translated metrics uh, on the 22nd or the 25th. So I'd like to, I still want to get this release out in October, uh, but I think a, a two week, a two week window for the working groups to make sure that their metrics are where they need to be is fair. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm just saying, we, it sounds like we can put this as an under review metric at our next meeting, which would be the 19th. Yes, however, if we're, so if we're, uh, if we are introducing another metric that is this close to. Uh, this isn't another metric though, this is just a change to a name. Right, but we, but we also have the change request commits that we're introducing, right? Which is going to be a, it's oh, going that, to be a that very, we can, like, we can, I mean, if that, I mean, I guess, you know, we can see where we're at on the 19th. If it would cause problems, we can always wait two more weeks, but. Oh, no, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not really talking about the, uh, like releasing. I'm talking about maybe if we're, if we're, uh, if we've got two metrics that are kind of similar to each other, we should maybe take a look at both of the metrics to make sure that there's not any confusion about them, that they are differentiated. There are, uh, and, they are and, yeah, they're only, I mean, there, there are, they have the name commits in them, but I think what they represent is fundamentally different. Yep. Yep. I, and I, I get that. I just want, I want to make sure that maybe we revisit the code changes commits too, to make sure that that's clear that that's clear in the language, right? So that the, that it's clear these are two different metrics and that they are differentiated. Uh, you know what I mean? I do, I do. I am, so I was involved in the development of the original code changes mm -hmm. um, commits metric and I am very certain, but let's just take a look here. Sorry, I lost my, oh, there we go. I lost my screen. Okay. Okay. Um, so this does talk about using get. Uh, it differentiates between author date and committer date. Um, so including um, merge commits are really the merge commits are the the novel 
commit, if you will, that is introduced on any platform hosted repository. So that would be most of the repos in open source that we're talking about. Every time you may or may not have noticed that you merge a pull request that actually creates a commit in the repository related to that, that merge requests merging. Um, it's also worth noting that merge, so if I think of change requests versus commits, um, one aspect of a change request is that not all change requests are involve the default branch for a repository. So you can you can have a record of commit activity that doesn't ever reach the main or the default branch of a, pro, of a repository. So there is there is information about process in the change requests and the change request commits that is not revealed by the commits. Um, you will see um, dead ends and things like that. Um, so for example, if I have a development branch that I merge into another development branch, but that development branch never sees the light of day and never gets merged into the, the default repository branch, then all that will be recorded in change request data. All that will be recorded in change request commit data. And none of that will be represented ever in the commit log for the default branch of the repository, which is what we are implicitly always talking about when we talk about change requests or um, code change commits or code changes as they are presently and somewhat confusingly called. Uh, in fact, making code changes, code changes commits will um, further disambiguate the role of pull requests and pull request commits in, in the open source process. Okay, so do you think we need to do you think we need to make any edits to the document code changes commits other than the name title to differentiate them, or do you think it's exactly perfect the way it is? I think when I look at the way it is, and I think about what we know today versus what we know then, I don't think it's ambiguous the way that it is because it's talking about um, change to the source code. Uh, I mean, this is, this is a pretty clear definition. Okay. And I think perhaps what's missing is that whenever I have yet to see a case or a dashboard where commits that are not part of the default branch are counted. And that is not an aggregator or a filter presently or a parameter on code changes commits. So I suppose there is some small possibility of confusion. However, I think the possibility is super small because nobody really looks at commits that aren't part of the default branch. They're looking for things that are released into the wild. Um, but it's not stated explicitly here and there are certainly commits and repositories that uh, never make it to the default branch. And ultimately they're deleted, the branches are deleted or the forks are deleted or atrophied. So I think, I don't think it matters for understanding the health and sustainability of a project. Uh, I'm mostly worried about consuming the metrics and a, a user coming to the metrics and, and seeing, well, we have code changes commits and we have change request commits. Is it obvious to me how they are differentiated? And is it obvious to me how I can use or explore both of them? So, and I do, I understand that, the, I understand that so, we're talking about different things. I'm just talking, uh, I'm just talking about, is there, is so there- So the way I would change, if I would, if I was to make it, if I was to try to make it sort of even more clear than it is, and, and I see, I think we're see where you're going. I would maybe change the question to, 
how many changes were made to a source code repository during a, a source code repository's default branch during a specified period. And, and I could even just change, if even just adding the word repository and not including default branch would, would make it and get repository because ultimately we're really only talking about Git repositories uh, in this community. And the Git repository is an object that people understand. And if we make it clear in change request commits that these are patterns of commits within a change request on a Git platform, wait a minute, let me do suggest here. So to sum up, <laughs> since I'm kind of lost. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a very, very nuanced, and it's yeah. a, it's actually more complicated to to just like commits code change commits. I think is simple. Change request commits has a lot more platform based nuance associated with it. Okay, and um, and because that's where the change request the, happens. The one we released already is looking at the whole change requests as a whole, like how many cool. change requests there are, et cetera. Mm -hmm. it's, Whereas a higher this one level, looks... it's a higher yes. level of, of abstraction, right? Yeah. Yep. So, so this, this one looks at a... like how complicated those change requests, how complicated a, an entire change request is. So it looks at all the different little commits within one change request. Yes. Okay. Can you can you go back to the uh, that dot Google document real quick? Mm -hmm. So in the question, so yeah. what is the pattern of commits? Can you change that to what is the pattern of code change commits and link to the metric? Yes. Oops. And then I and then uh, and then it starts to uh, and it, when we link to the metric. Kevin, do we provide the link to the Git repository or the link to the website? Uh, the website, I believe. Yes, the website. Okay. Yeah. So, a uh, question uh, or a comment. I, I, I really like the Kevin's first question was, what is the difference? When I read the name of these two metrics, what is the difference, the obvious difference? which I feel is more on the pattern side rather than just uh, reading the title. So maybe I, I'm proposing like change request pattern rather than commits. Uh, so, so we're not talking about change requests though. We're, we are talking about commits, right? So we're talking about no, we're commits talking, that occur this is, okay. within change requests, right? These these are the commits that are recorded by the platform when a change request is merged. Right. So so change which is change which request is the, part is just a descriptor. That's right. So, right. so, so it wouldn't just, be change so this, request patterns, it would be commit patterns within change requests if we were to change the title. And I'm not right. I'm not sure we need to. I after after talking through this, this is making sense to me. It's just change request commits is a is a more focused view of commits, right? Of of, of code change commits. We're just we're looking at it in a in a specific context, and that specific context is the patterns of commit activity within change requests. That's that are reflected by the platform and associated with change requests. Yeah, that's right. And if if I was to suggest wanting to understand the complexity of commits. I would say that the change request commits combined with change request files give you a full picture of the scope of a change request. And so the, and the current the naming oh sorry. I was yeah, just so say the that... changer yeah. I'm quiet. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say I don't think we need to change the name because the current name actually matches the, the naming convention that we've, 
that we've chosen to use regarding uh, code changes. Code changes. Yeah. So why I was uh, because I was just reading the name and I was lost, like uh, without going into further detail. So like, what is the difference between change requests and change request comments? Just simple that question is was confusing to me. So you can have you can have multiple commits within a change request. Right. Right. So when you're if let's just say if we were counting commits within a change request, right, you have one change request. And within that change request, you could have, you know, five commits. Right. Uh, however, you have one change request, right? So the, the change okay. request is a uh, the change request is in in Git repositories that the change request is that uh, one pull request. It's that place where all of this other stuff can happen, right? So right. reviews can happen within change requests, commits can happen within change requests, comments can happen within change requests. Uh, right. So change requests are really kind of a collection of code development activity. Okay. So I obviously explained this very recently to somebody. So if I was to get at the nuance of, of these are, I've actually, so I've actually obviously been looking a lot into this um, recently. And so these are the detailed nuances that have to be taken into account when one's looking at change request commits. Yep, this it's, is it's not helpful. Yeah, there's, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's not trivial. And that, that's one of the reasons I, I think we should possibly you know, point out that one, 
one of the ways that people use change request commits is to try to understand the sort of yep. level of complexity involved in a pull request. And this, I think this metric combined with the files metric provides an understanding of the impact of any particular change request. There, while there may be a number of squashed commits, there'll still likely be more commits than a very large pull request. And there's certainly going to be, an, you know, it will be unambiguous when we look at change request files that if there are 500 or 10 files involved in a particular change request. So, yeah, Line, um, lines, of, lines of code, commits, number of files mm -hmm. can all all show complexity, right? Yeah, so, well, and, and lines of code, really, you can get that from the Git log most effectively from, from the platform, I, I think, because of the squashing of commits that's common, it's a little more difficult, but you, you will, it is available. But I think you can get that from that change request itself. So I have proposed the word complexity rather a pattern. Is it fair to say it, uh, we are looking at the complexity? Because I see the entire discussion is around understanding the complexity, but we are looking uh, writing as a pattern. Well, that, me so, I wouldn't say that it's complexity. I would say that it's 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 nuance. So, it's yeah. It's so, and so so for me, for example, when I read the word pattern, I see a trained over a period of time, right? Like uh, for the open source developers or a community or a, whatever the process is. So are we looking at that trained over a period of time? How they are doing it or Am I re reading it incorrectly? Pattern has some other meaning. Maybe. So, if, so change requests, if I was going to, change requests are an excellent candidate for a metrics model, to right. be candid, because if you want to look at patterns, you need, I think the things that you need to examine are the pull, re the change request itself, and how long it's open prior to either merging or closing, the extent to which it is sent back to for review, you know, sent back for changes or not. And so what is just the cycle of that thing as a whole? The commits and the files give you a, 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 an impression of the girth of any particular change request. The presence or absence of formal reviews and reviewers gives you a insight into the process that a particular project follows with regards to change requests. I think the use or non-use of labels provides another dimension. So if I wanted to have a, a broad understanding of how change requests are employed across projects, I would include all of these elements because they all disclose something about how a project works. So I, I agree with that. I think change requests is an excellent metric model to look at. Uh, yeah. And then to, to Vinod's point earlier, the, the question should be explicitly, what are we measuring? Not right. what are we, what are we inferring, right? So right. complexity, com if complexity is something that we would, we could infer from measuring this. Uh, so if that's the case, we could, we could mention complexity in the uh, objective. Right, you might measure this to explore the complexity of a project, but complexity should not be part of the question, uh, and I don't think it should be part of the description. So the the question, the description should be: This is kind of this is explicitly what we're measuring, and this is explicitly the description of what we're measuring. Uh, so, so, so we're not measuring complexity. We're I, I agree. We're measuring I just, the number of code change commits. I agree, but. Uh, my only, I'm not saying that I want to stick with the complexity. My only concern was when I read the word pattern, I see a trained over a period of time. That's what I'm trying to understand. Are we measuring a trained over a period of time, like from time one to time uh, two? What is the pattern of commits? Is it that, like, to me, the word pattern tells a trained over a particular uh, interval. Okay, Am but I, that's not so so but remember we're working on a discrete metric here. 
Right. So pattern word tells me it's a continuous rather a discrete. I'm stuck with the word pattern, it. not what like what I'm trying to communicate is that. So when I read the word pattern, I see a continuum of a momentum rather than a discrete point. That's where I got to start. So I'm not I see what you're saying. I see. So pattern, I think I think the word so Vinod's point that the word pattern is inappropriate for a discrete metric point taken. Yes. So I, what I is think the best word? I don't know. I think it's count, basically. <laughs> How many um code change commits are in a code in a change request? And and for the reasons I outline in the description, that number can vary uh, depending on the platform as well as the practices yeah. of the project. Right. So maybe then how many counts within a change request on a Um, uh, so we do this metric enumerates each what is that and what is the total so in the description, how many in the description we say mm -hmm. this metric enumerates each commit and describes the commit based on the number of lines of code and files changed in a commit so it's not just a count of code change commits it is it is more uh it is more than that it has more depth to it than just a count uh, and i think that's why that's why the the pattern language originally uh is, yeah. is was a better fit than count uh, I and i still and i still here. think maybe pattern is a better fit than count uh, if we just if we're just counting the commit and we're not uh, describing the commit based on the number of lines of code and files changed in the commit, uh, then then yeah, counting makes sense. But the the fact that we have the well, I mean, and describes the commit based on the number of lines of code and files changed, I think mm -hmm. that uh, that's something that's something more than a count. So this and I think the, pattern so fits. So you describe some things there that are not in this metric, like number of files. I didn't write that so, description. I assumed you had written that description. Um, yeah, and actually, yeah, actually, it's the metric and yeah, describes the commit based on the number of lines of code. And and so I would actually say uh, change request files is a different metric. Yes. Um, so if I wrote yeah. this, I would I would sort of So you, you didn't write that. I would, I would, I would, well, if I did, I would, I would contradict myself now and say that, um, the, the number of the files, files code commit change request files is a different metric than change request commits. So, and do we, I think change request files is one of the metrics that we have proposed to move mm -hmm. forward. Yeah. It's actually substantially less complex. Oh yeah, yeah, that's trivial. Be, be, right? Because there's well, there's less platform initiated nuance to how mm -hmm. how you count them. Oh yeah, yeah. In uh, September first, we had proposed that one. Looks like. Uh, so, so this metric enumerates each commit associated by a get platform with a change request and describes the commit um, the 
it's not files changed it's in, and describes the commit. Um, basically the information that you're getting is, you know, Okay, so it's it's a count of commit, but it's also uh, it also tells you who's making the commits. So I think I think in that case, pattern still holds. So it's you know who made each commit and represents the parent commits embedded within it. Um, this provides an indication of how in general a repository. I would say how a repository's change request process is managed. And I would take those two sentences and pull them down to the objective. These two here? Yep. Oops, I think I missed a T. Uh, which I must then have left up here. Yep. Manage tained. Oh. <laughs> I made up a word. I like it. Manage tained. I may want to copyright that one. That sounds promising. Yeah. That'd be the, it's a new, uh, new common metric, manage tainer. How many managed Manage trainers are there in a, in a project? Exactly. Uh, you know, we have about 10 minutes left and um, maybe we should, I would like to maybe pause from this engaging conversation and then allow Peace to introduce themselves or Perry. Um, are you there? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Um, Hello. I'm sorry I ignored you for the principal part of the meeting. I, we always like to welcome newcomers and I guess my head so far in the game, I failed to do that. So please introduce yourself. No, it's totally fine. It seems like everyone was very involved in the work, so I didn't want to disturb. Um, I'm Pisa Jeme Perry. Um, I am a designer and I'm part of the open source community Africa. Uh, in the past couple of weeks, I've joined the the app ecosystem metrics group. Uh, I've been working with George and the rest of the folks, and I decided to contribute more into the chaos community. And I'm trying to find a group, join various groups to see what is going on in each group and see how I can help with, the, with my skill and this knowledge I have, and then just basically um, be part of folks that create metrics around um, the success of open source at large. Well, we welcome we welcome you. And yeah, welcome. I I, I, you. I assume you're working in an app, some app ecosystem right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the the app ecosystem working group uh, is a great working group. Uh, what we do here in the evolution working group is, as you could have heard, as you probably heard, if you were listening, you know, listening to. Our discussion is try to sort of make sense and disambiguate some things that are unclear if you just look at the platform. So if you're just looking at change requests on GitHub, you probably don't understand all of the information that's behind each change request and how you can count that. And so we're essentially arriving at standard ways of counting and explaining these very um, these very granular pieces of a platform. And then I think partly through the inspiration of the app ecosystem working group and partly through the inspiration of the Asia Pacific working group, which meets at 8 a.m. Central Daylight Time tomorrow morning, just as an aside, um, we've started talking about metrics models. So each of the metrics really, for the most part, with the limited exception, represent a very like counting one little piece of the activity on a project. And a metrics model is something more along the lines of, 
as, so for example, if we want to look at change requests as a model, there are probably eight to 10 different dimensions of a change request that we can track and count and bringing them together as a model represents a pattern of how a project is behaving over time with their merge request or pull request activity. So the pull request itself or the merge request itself is the, the main thing, but then it also has commits associated with it and files associated with it. Those are two other things. Uh, there are comments that can be made on a change request. And that's like another thing. There are reviews that can be provided that either approve or deny merging into the change into the primary branch of the repository. Each re, each pull request change request can be labeled, um, and those are those are like the so like all that stuff together. If you look at projects side by side or over time give give you kind of a picture of how how their process works and and so that would be a change request model and i think i think something like a change request model is more similar to the kinds of metrics i've or the kinds of or the way that i've observed the app ecosystem group engaging with metrics where you're saying okay we want to look these are the metrics that we want to work on or that we think are important and you may or may not actually develop those metrics. Some of those metrics might get developed within a working group like this. Um, okay. So this group is basically focused on taking up the big chunk of the development process and trying to break it down into models and metrics. That's mm -hmm. uh, mostly metrics. The models work. There's actually a there is actually a models working group uh, that it's does the that, that does the models work. So the a lot of the working groups are there's overlap between what happens and a lot of metrics that are worked on within working groups uh, can can could fit in other in other working groups. So the, the the models working group is where we kind of can take a step back and look at the big picture and look at metrics that come from different working groups and how they might interact together uh, and how we can we can create models that that people can consume that, that would help them understand the health of their community. And, uh, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Sean, uh, there is one agenda item that we do need to get to before this, this ends. Okay. Let me say one more uh, thing about models. Yep. Uh, the, the aim right now, the aim of the models working group is to develop a model, like they actually describe how to express a metrics model. We have a standard template that we use for describing metrics. We don't yet have a standard template that we use to describe metrics models. So the metrics models working group is working on defining a metrics model. And in the process of doing that, building a template for extra explaining a metrics model so that other working groups can then develop metrics models uh, that are related to their particular area of interest. So like, change requests would be a, a metrics model in addition to a metric I think that would be likely to be developed in this working group but we probably won't start that work until we have at least one example to work from uh, okay. so Sounds that we so that we don't so that we don't like all go off and start defining metrics models um, like children with crayons um kevin you said there was an agenda item and welcome peace i hope to see you again um yeah. and you. uh kevin you said there was one agenda item we needed to get to yes uh so we have we have released one we have released one metric or we're in the process of releasing one metric in this group that is the contribution okay. attribution metric all right uh so we need to make sure that this metric is ready for release uh and we need to make the uh so so i would say there, there are two things we need to do i think we need to review the metric again to make sure it is what we want it to be yeah i'm, just, uh, I'm and, seeing and I'm looking at and the comments that, yeah and through that review we should make any edits that uh that need to be made uh So I, so okay, we, 
I am so confused by this met this. This is an issue for contribution attribution. Okay. They're just I, I haven't okay. So this this pull request, I see this pull request is associated with this issue. And then add evolution. Okay, so this pull request is associated with this issue. Um here's a comment and then lucas made a comment a week ago that some text is hard to understand who has contributed to an open source project and what attribution information okay. 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 i made some trivial edits without going through an issue first so does that mean he has an open pull request I didn't see one. I was confused by that as well. Yeah, I don't see but, one either. Uh, has he proposed any changes to the Word doc? Oh, that could. Uh, well, the Word doc shouldn't be the, the Google yeah. doc. You mean that shouldn't even be a thing? Anymore. Yeah, yeah, that shouldn't be a thing because it's no more even in the discussion entire anywhere. Hmm. Uh, um... You mentioned making some copy edits. Could you direct us toward where we might find those? We looked for a pull request, did not see one. Um, I think I agree with him that the, the text is a little hard to understand because, in fact, we are talking about um, which people and organizations should get at. Um, our question is long and complicated. His question is short and decontextualized, and um, perhaps we could meet somewhere in the middle. Can you tag, uh, tag Matthew Tift in this as well? Because uh, he took the he took the lead on this yeah. metric. Uh, so we have we have two weeks to uh, two weeks to get this metric to where we want it to be for release. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I would recommend that we all maybe re yeah. review the metric ourselves. Yeah, uh, and see if we can address the comments. I don't know if. Uh, I mean, my, my default is that I think he raises a point about this question being a little bit, you know, it could be phrased a little bit more clearly. I think his version's a little bit truncated, so we just want to kind of try to land somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Um, and our time is up. Yep. And yep. In, addition, in addition to addressing that comment, mm -hmm. I, I do think it would be a good idea for us to just review the metric to make sure that it it's, looks good. Sure. Uh, so. Yeah. I, uh, and that can be done by, fortunately, these issues give us a nice little location. So I guess the to do action item all. Um, all this metric for final release. Thank you, everybody. Yep. I will probably see many of you in the regular weekly. This, I guess, is the monthly weekly meeting um, yep. uh, that starts in eight minutes. So until then, I bid you adieu. Yep.